العلم أشراف مطلب وطالبه لله أكرام من يمشي على قادم العلم نور مبين يستضيء به أهل السعادات والجهال في الظلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وسيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد so we continue with the explanation of Kashf al-Shubuhat. And last, the last time we were together, we um, learned that there are two types of refutations. So the author, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, al-Shaykh, al-Imam, al-Mujaddid, Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad al Abdul Wahab, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he mentioned that there are two types of there are two ways of refuting the people of innovation and the people of shirk. And he mentioned those two ways as al-rad al-ijmali and al-rad al-tafsili. So a general refutation and a more specific refutation. And he mentioned that the general refutation is a refutation based on basically principles. And he cited the verse in Surah Al-Imran, هو الذي أنزل عليك الكتاب منه آيات محكمات هن أم الكتاب وأخر متشابهات. Allah says, هو الذي Allah is the one who has revealed to you the book. From the book are آيات محكمات, are verses that are محكمات, verses that are clear. هن أم الكتاب, verses that are clear and unambiguous. هن أم الكتاب. وَأُخَرُ مُتَشَابِهَاتِ And other verses that are considered mutashabihat, they are unclear and unambiguous. And then he mentioned the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ pertaining to this verse, the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, where the Prophet ﷺ, he said to Aisha, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمُ الَّذِينَ يَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ سَمَّ اللَّهُ فَاحْذَرُوهُمْ Okay? Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, if you see those who follow the unclear or ambiguous verses um, and abandon verses that are clear, verses that are uh, clear and manifest, فَأُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ سَمَّ اللَّهُ Then they are those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in this verse, فَحْذَرُوهُمْ So be wary of them and um, stay away from them. Um, and then the author, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he uh, mentioned the types of ihkam and attashabuh. So obviously when we say ihkam and attashabuh, what we are talking about is the Qur'an. Okay, is the Qur'an. So he mentioned that al-ihkam wa attashabuh fil Qur'an, okay, is two types. Okay, he mentioned that ihkam and attashabuh fil Qur'an is two types. Okay, so the, so the first type is al ihkam wa tashabuh al kulli, and the second type is al ihkam wa tashabuh al juz'i. Okay, so al ihkam wa tashabuh al kulli is the meaning of this is ihkam and tashabuh that is basically um, that is uh, ihkam or tashabuh that is all encompassing and comprehensive. Which basically means that the Qur'an, the whole of the Qur'an is described as muhkam and the whole of the Qur'an is described as mutashabih. Okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Kitabun uhkimat ayatuhu. So in this context, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse described the whole of the Qur'an as muhkam. Which means here, madha? What does muhkam here in this specific context mean? It means al-itqan. It means al-itqan. And al-itqan means perfection. So Allah is saying that the whole of the Qur'an is perfect. The whole of the Qur'an has been mastered and it is perfect. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the whole of the Qur'an as mutashabih. In the verse kitaban mutashabiha. And the meaning of mutashabih, أي يصدق بعضه بعضا. It means that the Qur'an, um, the whole of the Qur'an is in agreement with each other. Every verse is in agreement with, with all of the other verses. 
every verse testifies to the authenticity and the truthfulness of all the other verses. So in this regard, it, is a, it resembles each other. All these verses in this regard resemble each other. Hence why, so tashabuh comes from huna min ash-shabah, to resemble each other. Min ash-shabah. So if I say, fulanun yushbihu fulanan, so-and-so resembles so-and-so, yani it comes from ash-shabah. So at-tashabuh huna, al-tashabuh al-kulli means, أن القرآن كله يصدق بعضه بعضا ويشبه بعضه بعضا في التصديق. So the whole of the Quran looks resembles each other in honesty, in its truthfulness, etc. So this is الإحكام التشابه الكلي. And then we have الإحكام the second type of إحكام التشابه is الإحكام التشابه الجزئي partial partial إحكام and partial متشابه, which basically means that some verses are considered muhkama and other verses are considered mutashabiha. So in this specific context, ihkam here means clear. And tashabuh means unclear. So ihkam means something that is clear, manifest, and other verses, and, and tashabuh means something that is ambiguous and unclear. Okay? So al-ihkam tashabuh al-juz'i has two types okay al ihkam al tashabuh al juz'i has two types does anyone remember what they were fi bab al khabar and ahsant fi bab al talib talab so ihkam so the two types of ihkam al tashabuh al juz'i is the first is fi bab al khabar that which is muhkam in bab al khabar and that which is mutashabih in bab al khabar so brothers what is bab al khabar what do we mean by bab al khabar ما معنى باب الخبر؟ Sisters, باب الخبر. Information مثل ماذا؟ Such as أحسنت. Names of and attributes of Allah. Okay, so باب الخبر means مثلاً the names and attributes of Allah is باب الخبر. Uh, anything that involves us believing in an, a piece of information that Allah سبحانه وتعالى gives us. Okay, so when Allah سبحانه وتعالى مثلاً tells us the story of the Prophet Yusuf عليه السلام in Surah Yusuf. This is Babul Khabar. Are we expected to act and do specific types of worship in this specific surah? No. We're expected to listen and to believe. Okay, so this is Babul Khabar. So the muhkam in Babul Khabar is ma zahara lana ilmuhu. The muhkam in Babul Khabar are those verses whose or those يعني, inf- those verses in which يعني, whose the information or the, its knowledge has become apparent to us. ما ظهر لنا علمه. So, مثلا, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he informed us of certain things that will occur. مثلا, he informed us that they will come, uh, they will be, they will come rulers that are considered tyrants, rulers who will be oppressive, who will uh, take our wealth, beat our backs, and this happened, and we've seen these rulers. So the Prophet sallallahu so this huna zahara lana ilmuhu. So this is now muhkam for us. If we have seen it with our, our own eyes. So this is something that is clear. Okay? Um, and at-tashabuh in Bab al-Khabar. Who can give me an example of at-tashabuh in Bab al-Khabar? No. So we, we discussed this. Naam. So tashabuh in Bab al-Khabar, the, at, the attributes of Allah, in terms of their actual meanings, they are muhkam. In terms of what they mean, they are muhkam. But in terms of their true reality, they are considered mutashabih. So mathalan, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his attributes is, is al-kalam. Wa kallam Allahu Musa taklima. We know that from the attributes of Allah is al-ghadab. Okay, غير يعني وغضب الله عليه عليه ولعنه. We know that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has at the attribute of يعني he has he has uh, two hands بل يداه مبسوطتان. Okay, so these are محكمة. They they are clear. The meanings يعني the, the these attributes in terms of the يعني the affiliate the the fact that they are the attributes of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala are محكمة. They're clear. 
However, the actual reality of these attributes, yani the actual reality of what these attributes are, are ambiguous to us. So, مثلاً, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two hands, بَلْ يَدَاهُمْ أَبْصُوطَةً And we believe that the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are hands that are befitting of His uh, majesty, befitting of His greatness. And they are unlike the hands of His creation. Okay? But we've never seen these hands because we've never seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we, how can we envisage uh, the attributes of Allah in our limited minds when we have not seen the Creator? Okay? Al-hukmu an shay far'un an tasawwuri. We have not, كَيْفَ نَتَصَوْرُ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى وَلَمْ نَرَهُ We have not seen him. Okay, so in this regard they are ambiguous. Does that make sense? Who can give me another example of something that is mutashabih from, from Bab al-Khabar? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us of as-sirat al mustaq He tells us of as-sirat, mathalan, the bridge between Jannah and the fa- and, and nar He tells us of al-mizan. He tells us of al-hawd, the system. He tells us of things that will happen on Yawm al-Qiyamah. Okay? Uh, and he informs us of the angels, the malaika. Um, have we seen these things? We haven't seen. So, we haven't seen these things. So, to us, they are mutashabih. Do you understand? They are things that are unclear. Lam yadhar lana ilmuhu. We believe in them, obviously. This, it's bin babi ilm al ghaib We have to believe in them, but we haven't seen them. Okay. Um, and Babu Talab, what does Babu Talab mean? Command or prohibition. Commands and prohibitions. Likewise, commands and prohibitions are two types, muhkam and mutashabih. So the muhkam sisters is what? What's the definition of muhkam in Babu Talab? Sorry? The meaning and istidlal are clear. Good. And mutashabih? Naam, the opposite. Yani the meanings and the istidlal are unclear. Naam, good. Any questions so far? Istidlal means who can define istidlal for the sister? Yeah, how the evidence is extracted. Istidlal is how the evidences are extracted. Then we move on to Al-Jawab Al-Mufassal. Did we read Al-Jawab Al-Mufassal? We haven't, did we? Okay, Jayd. طيب قال المصنف رحمه الله تعالى وأما الجواب المفصل He says, as for Al-Jawab Al-Mufassal As for the detailed response So, the general response we know We know what to say to a mushrik When he comes with certain shubhat And we do not actually know exactly how to respond to this specific shubha, but we know that what they are saying is wrong. We give them a general response. So now the author, rahimahullah ta'ala, the shaykh, is going to give us, he's going to mention their shubhat in more detail, and then he will respond to each shubha. So he says, al jawab al mufassal." As for the detailed jawab, فَإِنَّ أَعْدَاءَ اللَّهِ لَهُمْ اعْتِرَاضَاتٌ كَثِيرًا عَلَى دِينِ الرُّسُلِ For indeed, the enemies of Allah... Have many objections to the religion of the messengers. Yasuduna biha nas anhu. They use these objections to, as an obstacle, blocking people from the truth. Minha qawluhum from these objections. So here objection means shubha. Okay, here mean objection means shubha. So he says, Minha qawluhum nahnu la nushriku billahi shay'an. We do not. Associate partners with Allah. So this is the mushrik now saying, Why are you calling me a mushrik? I don't associate any partners with Allah. Bell, in fact, Nashhadu Annahu La Yakhluku. We testify that there is no creator, Wala Yarzuku. There is no provider, Wala Yuhi. No one gives life, Wala Yumi to no one takes away life. وَلَا يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرَ And no one maintains the affairs. وَلَا يَنْفَعُ No one gives benefit. وَلَا يَضُرْ No one uh, harms or causes harm. إِلَّا اللَّهِ Except Allah. وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ 
illallah except Allah alone without associating any partners with him. This is what I testify. This is what the mushrik is saying. وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ لَا يَمْلِكُ لِنَفْسِهِ نَفْعًا وَلَا ضَرًّا And I also testify that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يملك لنفسه نفعا ولا ضرا He is unable to, to attract any benefit for himself or repel any evil from himself. فضلا عن عبد القادر Let alone عبد القادر أو غيره أو other than him. ولكن, however, أنا مذنب, I am a sinner. لهم جاه عند الله And the righteous have a status in the sight of Allah. وَأَطْلُبُ مِنَ اللَّهِ بِهِمْ And I seek Allah through them. And I seek Allah through them. Okay, so this is his first shubha. يعني when he says, I seek Allah through them, he means, يعني, and I seek the forgiveness of Allah through the, uh, my intercession or through the intercession or through me asking for help uh, from the righteous. Okay, so I don't mean to worship them. I'm just using them as an intermediary between me and Allah because I'm a sinner. This is the shubha. Okay, this is the misconception. So let's listen to the response now. فَجَاوِبْهُ بِمَا تَقَدَّمْ So he says, respond to him with that which we have already mentioned. وَهُوَ and it is. So he's going to repeat it for you. أَنَّ الَّذِينَ قَاتَلَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وسلم, That those whom the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم fought or, or, or waged war against مُقِرُّونَ They acknowledge بِمَا ذَكَرْتَ لِي أَيُّهَا الْمُبْطِلِ They acknowledge to what you have just mentioned أَيُّهَا الْمُبْطِلِ O oh, you who يعني uh, O oh, you who believes in falsehood وَمُقِرُّونَ And they also acknowledge أَنَّ أَوْثَانَهُمْ That their أَوْثَانَ أَنَّ أَوْثَانَهُمْ And they also acknowledge That their idols لَا تُدَبِّرُ شَيْئًا The idols that they worship Have no control of anything They have no control And they do not maintain any of the affairs of this universe وَإِنَّمَا أَرَادُوا However, all they wanted who is the Damir going back to? Who is he talking about here? Mushrikeen. The Mushrikun of old. Yeah? وَإِنَّمَا أَرَادُوا مِمَّنْ قَصَدُوا They only wanted from the people that they were directing their ibadah towards. They only wanted الجاه والشفاعة They only wanted to use their status and their shafa'a, their intercession. وَأَقْرَأْ عَلَيْهِ And recite on him مَا ذَكَرَ اللَّهُ فِي كِتَابِهِ وَوَضَّحَ What Allah mentioned in His book and has explained. Do you understand the response? Okay, so very simple. This mushrik is saying, why are you calling me a mushrik? I believe that Allah is the Khaliq, Al-Raziq, Al-Mudabbir, Al-Muhi, Al-Mumit. And I believe that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, يعني he can neither harm or benefit. Uh, forget about Abdul Qadir Al-Jailani. Um, but however, I am a sinner. And because of the fact that I am constantly sinning, I know that these people, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Abdul Qadir Al-Jilani, so on, so on, so on, so on, he meant, يعني, the people that he worships, I know that these people are righteous people and they died upon piety. And I know that they have a jah. Do you know what jah means? They have a status. And I know that they have a status in the sight of Allah. All I am doing is I am asking um, and I am seeking Allah through them. So I am not a mushrik. All I am doing is that I am invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am worshipping Allah through them. Do you understand? So I am a sinner. I can't directly um, turn my attention to Allah. I can't, I'm, I, I can't seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness directly. I have to go through them. Does that make sense? طيب. So the response to this is that we use um, the seerah of the Prophet So the Prophet وسلم, the people that he fought, they acknowledged everything that he has just mentioned. So he fought Abu Jahl, and he fought Abu Lahab, and the Mushriku of Quraysh. And the Mushriku of Quraysh, Rahmukallah, they all testified and they all acknowledged that their idols, 
the idols that they worshipped, they all knew that their idols didn't really control, don't control the universe. They all knew that their idols don't bring down rain. They all knew that their idols can't give life or take, take away life. Okay? They all knew this. However, all they wanted, the mushrikun of Quraysh, through their worship of these idols, was the, the intercession of these idols in the sight of Allah. They wanted the, these idols to intercede for them on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. They wanted these idols to, they were using the status of these idols in the sight of Allah. Okay, this is the first shubha, and that's a response to the first shubha. Sorry. No. Um, what if they say, for example, um, the people, the mushrikeen that they worship were dead, and like the ones that they worship were dead? Um, no. So it's a so it's, he's going to discuss all of this. So it's like a sequence. So what I want from you, sister, is that um, is that this specific that you understand every shubha and the response to every shubha. What you have mentioned, there's a response to it. But remember, this is a sequence of, this is like a hiwar. Do you know what hiwar means? Yeah, dialogue. dialogue. So it's like a dialogue. So he says this, and this is the response. And then the, the mushrik is going to respond to this. Okay? And then the muwahid is going to respond to the shubha. So it's like a dialogue. Okay? So it's like a train of thought. I want you, remember, what's the name of this book? Kashf al-shubhat. Exposing the shubhat. Okay? And this book comes after, mada? Kitab al so the student of knowledge who's reading this book, learning this book, should have already studied Kitab al-Tawheed and Thalathat al-Usul and Qawaid al-Arba'ah. So the student of knowledge should already have a strong basis in Aqidah and Tawheed. Okay? This is because now you are being exposed to misconceptions. So it is very important that you listen to the misconception, the Shubha, very carefully. Because nine times out of ten, the actual refutation of the shubha is always going to be in the shubha itself. Okay, it's always going to be there. Okay, so listen to it carefully and also listen to the response that's being given to the shubha. And then listen to the response of the mushrik to the response of the muahid. Does that make sense? Okay. Then the mushrik, after, after يعني, the muahid gives him this response, the mushrik says, فَإِنْ قَالْ the author says, and if he says, ayat, these verses, okay, nazalat fi man ya'budul asnam. Yani what he means by these verses are the verses that we had, we, the, the author mentioned previously, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, yani, uh, in, um, in Surah Al-Zumr, for example, the verse in Surah Al-Zumr, ma na'buduhum illa liyuqarribuna ila Allah zulfa. Okay, we don't worship them. He said, yeah, and these verses, and we'll, we'll mention these verses. So if he says, مثلاً, if the mushrik says, these verses, نزلت, they were, they were revealed, في من يعبد الأصنام. They were revealed in those, with regards to those who worship idols. ونحن and us, لا نعبد الأصنام. We don't worship idols. كَيْفَ تَجْعَلُونَ الصَّالِحِينَ مِثْلَ الْأَصْنَامِ And then he turns around and, may, and, and, and blames you for, for even mentioning this. And he says, how can you make the salihun similar to idols? Or he says, مَثَلًا أَمْ كَيْفَ تَجْعَلُونَ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ أَصْنَامِ Now how can you make the Prophet similar to idols? So this is his second shubha now. So he's basically saying, everything you have just told me, O Muwahid, he's not going to say O Muwahid, but... For the purposes of us understanding who is who, we'll mention it, inshallah. So if he says, O Muwahid, um, what you have just mentioned and the verses that you have mentioned are pertaining to those who worship Asnam. What's Asnam? What's a Sanam? A statue, an idol. Okay? I don't worship a, a, a statue or an idol. Okay? How can you make righteous people similar to idols? How can you make the Prophet Muhammad similar to idols? How can you make the Prophet Isa, Abdul Qadir? These are righteous people. How can you include them in the same bracket as Ma'alat, Wa'uzza, wa Manat? How can you make them into... And how? Kayf? How do we respond to them? This is the response. فَجَاوِبْهُ بِمَا تَقَدَّمْ Respond to him 
بما تقدم with what has preceded فإنه إذا أقر for indeed if he acknowledges أن الكفار يشهدون بالربوبية كلها لله if he acknowledges that the kuffar they testify and they affirm rububiyyah, lordship that rububiyyah, all of it belongs to Allah وأنهم ما أرادوا بما قصدوا إلا الشفاعة and that the only reason that they worshipped or called to these idols is to seek a shafa'a, to seek intercession. ولكن أراد أن يفرق بين فعلهم وفعله بما بما ذكر. However, all he wanted to do, يعني with his statement of this, with his, with this statement, all he wanted from this response, يعني the mushrik, is he wanted أن يفرق بين فعلهم وفعله. He wanted to 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 uh, يعني distinguish or he wanted to make a difference between فعلهم between their actions وفعله and his actions with what he's saying. Do you understand this bit? So through his, through this statement of his, you know when he says إن هؤلاء الآيات نزلت في من يعبد الأصنام ونحن لا نعبد الأصنام. When he says this. What he wants to, do, to what he wants from this is he wants to make you believe that what he is doing, the action that he is doing, is different to the actions of Abu Lahab and Abu Jahl or the Mushriku of Quraysh. When in reality, it's exactly the same thing. What was what were the Mushrikun of Quraysh doing when they were worshiping these asnam? They were calling to them, صح? They were invoking them. Okay, they were uh, calling Manat and Lat and Uzza, Ya Uzza, Ya Manat. Uh, they were in, they were asking for their intercession, okay. And what is this mushrik doing with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? He's calling to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He's invoking the Prophet. He's invoking Abdul Qadir al Jilani. So he wants to basically cause you to become. He's trying to deceive us. Basically, the actions are the same. Sah. Maybe the source of the actions are different. Do you understand the source of the action? Yeah, and maybe. Yes, the source of the actions are different. The people whom these actions are directed towards are different. But the actions are essentially the same. Okay? So the mushriku of Quraysh, Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab, they were directing their ibadah and their worship to who? To these idols. صح? Okay? And the mushriku of today, these mushrikun today, they're directing their actions to who? To whom? The Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Abdul Qadir al-Jiran Okay? فَذْكُرْ لَهُ the author then says, فَذْكُرْ لَهُ أَنَّ الْكُفَّارَ Then mention to him, أَنَّ الْكُفَّارَ مِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ مَنْ يَدْعُ الْأَصْنَامِ That from the kuffar, okay? So basically, listen, look at the subhanAllah, the fiqh of uh, Imam Muhammad al-Wahhab. He's saying to you, this is their intention. But rather than going and, and going into a philosophical debate with them and saying, no, 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 but the actions are the same and the source of the actions are different, forget about that. You don't need to even mention that. Okay? He says, he says, فَذْكُرْ لَهُ أَنَّ الْكُفَّارَ Mention to him that the kuffar, that the disbelievers, مِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ مَنْ يَدْعُ الْأَصْنَامِ From them are those who invoke idols, who worship idols. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ الْأَوْلِيَاءِ And from them are those who invoke awliya. الذين يعني أولياء meaning يعني people who are considered to be متقين الذين قال الله فيهم those whom Allah سبحانه وتعالى has mentioned and has 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 referred to in the verse أولئك الذين يدعون يبتغون إلى ربهم الوسيلة أيهم أقرب ويرجون رحمته ويخافون عذابه إن عذاب ربك كان محذورا so in this verse Allah سبحانه وتعالى he says أولئك الذين يدعون يبتغون إلى ربهم الوسيلة in the, those whom they invoke, yad'un hona means ya'budun also. Remember we mentioned du'a is ibadah. Yad'una, yani those whom they have uh, invoked, yabtaguna ila rabbihimul wasila. They are seeking, yani they are seeking, yabtaguna ila rabbihimul wasila. They are seeking and they desire towards their Lord al wasila and intermediary. أيهم أقرب ويرجون رحمته Which of them are closer to Allah ويرجون رحمته And they, they hope for his mercy ويخافون عذاب And they fear his عذاب 
Inna adab, adab rabbika kana mahdura. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's saying in this verse, that these mushrikun, yeah, these mushrikun who make dua, who invoke these aliha, who invoke these false gods, ila rabbihimul wasila. What they are doing is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is just mentioning the hikayat al waqi'. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning their reality. He is not condoning this. He's not saying what they're doing is correct, but he is mentioning this is what they do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that these people, through their invocation, through their d- ibadah to these false gods, what they are desiring is an intercession or intermediary or a gateway to their Lord. al wasila, like a gateway to their Lord. Okay? And, al- and then Allah says, which of them, ayyuhum aqrab wa yirju? This is a rhetorical question. Which of them are closer to Allah? Yani those whom they are worshipping? Yani from the, from the righteous? Or... The mushrikun who are worshipping them. Who, who's closer to Allah? Of course the, the righteous are closer to Allah. Does that make sense? So do you all understand the, the istidlal of this verse? Good. And then the author continues and he says, Rahimahullah ta'ala rahmatan wasi'ah, he says, وَيَدْعُونَ عِيسَ بْنَ مَرْيَمُ And they call and they, they supplicate to Isa ibn Maryam. وَأُمَّهُ And they supplicate to Isa's mother, رحمه الله تعالى. وَقَدْ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, مَا الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمَ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُولُ وَأُمُّهُ صِدِّيقًا Regarding this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, مَا الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمَ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ Indeed, المسيح ابن مريم, the son of, the son of Maryam, the son of Mary, Illa Rasul, he was only a messenger. Qad khalat min qablihi rasul Messengers, yani there were messengers before him. Wa ummuhu and his mother are, is a siddiqa. Wa dhkur lahu qawlahu ta'ala and also mention Allah's statement. Wa yawma yahshuruhum jami'an. Thumma yaqulu lil malaikati aha ulai iyaakum kanu ya'budun. Wa yawma yahshuruhum. And remember, wa dhkur, yani yawma yahshuruhum. And the day in which they are all, um, they all congregate. And they all come together. ثُمَّ يَقُولُ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ And then he says to the angels, أَهَاؤُلَاءِ إِيَّاكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يعني ثُمَّ And then, يَقُولُ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ أَهَاؤُلَاءِ إِيَّاكُمْ كَانُوا يَعْبُدُونَ Are these gods, are they the ones whom you كَانُوا يَعْبُدُونَ that, they, yeah, that you used to worship? وَقَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى And also mention the statement of Allah, وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يا عيسى ابن مريم أأنت قلت للناس اتخذوني وأمي إلهين اثنين وإذ قال الله أن من أن remember when Allah said O oh Isa ابن مريم did you say to the people such and such فقل له عرفت أن الله ك then say to him عرفت you you know أن الله كفر من قصد الأصنام that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has made takfir of those who worship idols قصد here he uses قصد Instead of abada, do you know why? Why does he use qasada instead of abada? The حقيقه امرهم انهم عبدوا الاصنام. فلماذا لماذا استخدم لفظه قصد بخلاف عبده? Does anyone know? What does qasada mean? Intent. نعم, intent to direct your attention towards something. Qasada. So why did he use qasada instead of abada? Because he knows, يعني, this is من باب التنزل في الخطاب. He is compromising in speech. It is a, it is a type of, um, it is a type, it is a, a, an adab and an etiquette when um, debating with a khasm, when debating with someone who is, a, uh, who is your opponent. That you compromise in some of the words that you say in order for them to understand. And in order for you to make them understand, basically. Or in, and also in order for you, for, for, for them not to nitpick. Not to nitpick your specific words and divert you from the main, your main objective. Okay, so if, they, if he says, مثلاً, عرفت أن الله كفر من, من عبد الأصنام, uh, uh, They'll say, نعم, لكن نحن ما, ما عبدناهم. We didn't worship them. And then you'll go around in circles all day. 
Okay? So he's saying basically use qasada li ajli hadha sabab. So he says, you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kafara, he made takfir of man qasada al asnam on those who um, intended their attention towards the asnam. So Allah made takfir of those who directed their attention, their desire, their ibadah, their worship to idols. وَكَفَّرَ أَيْضًا And he also made takfir on مَنْ قَصَدَ الصَّالِحِينَ Those who directed their attention to the salihin. So here, if this person is someone who is ذُو عَقَلْ مِنْ أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ If someone who's, who's someone who has some intellect, he will say, نَعَمْ But if he made qasd of the salihin, I also made qasd of the salihin. They Allah made takfir of those who made qasd of the salihin. I also make takfir of those, I also make qasd of the salihin. So what is the difference between what I'm doing and they're doing? So if Allah made takfir of, the, of these people, then that means I am also a kafir also by doing this. This is the, this is the, the, the thought process that the author Ta'ala, wants to encourage in the opponent. Does that make sense? Um, na'am. Then he says, وَقَاتَلَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ And the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi he still fought them. Okay? So this shubha, do you understand this shubha? Okay, so the shubha basically is very simple. He's basically saying that um, the people that you've mentioned worship idols. I don't worship idols. Okay, I'm only directing my attention to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, the response is simple. There are there are those who worship idols, whom Allah had made takfir on, and there are those who worship righteous people. Whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made takfir on. Okay? So, um, what's, يعني, basically, um, uh, يعني, there's no difference between, between, between your actions and their actions. Okay, so this is the simple response. 